The Camp of Miss Universe 2018, Catriona Gray, denounces Lieutenant General Antonio Parlade Jr. for dragging her name into a post that red tags other celebrities. In a statement posted on Instagram Friday, October 23, Catriona's lawyer, Joji Alonso, says, The beauty queen will not waver in continuously championing social causes that uplift women's lives. She says dragging Catriona's name when all she has endeavored to do is advocate for women's rights is completely uncalled for. Angel Loxin also takes to Instagram to demand an end to the baseless and reckless red tagging. Angel sets the record straight. She is not part of the New People's Army or NPA or any terrorist group, nor is her sister or her relative, human rights lawyer Neri Colmenares. This comes after Parlade cautions Liza Soberano that she might suffer the same fate of activist Josephine Lapira if she continues her ties with women's rights group Gabriela. Lapira was killed in 2017 in a clash between the military and the rebels. Parlade mentions Catriona and Angel in his warning. In an interview with ANC's Head Start, Parlade denies red tagging Angel and her sister. He says he is just informing the public that Angel's sister is a member of an underground organization despite having no evidence. He adds, he just wants Soberano to understand what he calls the duplicitous nature of Gabriela. He claims a lot of its members, quote, died in the mountains fighting with the government. Parlade, a spokesperson of the National Task Force to End Local Communist Armed Conflict, released his statement days after Soberano guested in Gabriela Youth's webinar. Motorcycle ride hailing apps like Ancas and Joyride are now allowed to operate. Calls for motorcycle taxis to resume operations grow as the government allowed more types of business establishments to reopen to augment limited public transportation. Back riding in motorcycles was previously limited to people from the same household. The country's coronavirus task force also approves a 30% seating capacity for religious gatherings like masses in general community quarantine areas like Metro Manila. The decision comes as the predominantly Catholic country gears up for the Christmas season when attendance to Simbanga Bay or night mass is a tradition. The Manila city government also announces next year's translation is canceled due to the coronavirus pandemic. An estimated 3.3 million Catholic devotees join the translation every year, which lasts for around 16 hours. In related news, the Philippines now allows the entry of select foreigners with investor and work visas beginning November 1. Presidential spokesperson Harry Roque announces Friday, October 23, foreign nationals allowed in the country beginning next month are limited to the following. Those with visas issued by the Bureau of Immigration under the Omnibus Investments Code, those with work visas issued by the Department of Justice, those with investor visas, including their dependents and workers in the Freeport zones. There are still 1,728 Filipinos in jail for the light offense of violating quarantine laws. The Supreme Court says it will look into the delay in releasing thousands of quarantine violators arrested during the lockdown period. In a press conference Friday, October 23, Chief Justice Josdado Peralta says they will trace where the delay is coming from. He says they will coordinate with the Justice Department and the local government department. The violations were considered light offenses and bailable. Data analyzed by Rappler shows the police arrest hundreds daily, but the number of inquests and court filings could not keep up, creating a bottleneck. The trend of thousands of quarantine violators stuck in jail has not slowed in seven months. United States President Donald Trump claims he is the least racist person in the room during the final presidential debate against Democratic challenger Joe Biden. The issue on racism is brought up during the debate Friday, October 23, Manila time, less than two weeks before the November 3 elections. Trump's pronouncement is a stark contrast to his racist statements and policies. Biden, meanwhile, affirms there is institutional racism in America. He calls for better education, better health care, better access to schooling, better access to opportunity to borrow money to start businesses for all Americans. 
Biden also denounces Trump for befriending North Korea's leader Kim Jong-un, who he calls a thug. The Democratic challenger says Trump's friendship with Kim is like saying we had a good relationship with Hitler before he invaded Europe. For the debate's final question, Biden is asked what he would say during his inaugural address to Americans who did not vote for him. He says he is going to give hope to Americans whether they voted for him or not. He adds, What is on the ballot is the character of this country. Decency, honor, respect, treating people with dignity, and making sure everyone has an even chance. A post claiming the Philippines was the most literate country in Asia under the regime of dictator Ferdinand Marcos is false. The post on Facebook page BBM Youth Advocate also claims the country's literacy rate dropped after Marcos was ousted as a result of the 1986 People Power Revolution. It was posted on May 27, but was still being shared in June. Data from the World Bank and UNESCO shows the Philippines was not the most literate country in Asia, at least from 1980 to 1986. Among adults in 1980, the Philippines' literacy rate of 83.3% trailed behind Thailand's 88% and Vietnam's 83.8%. The Philippines' 81.5% literacy rate among population aged 25 to 64 was also behind Thailand's 87.2%. In terms of youth literacy rate, the Philippines' 91.8% was lower than Thailand's 96.9%, Singapore's 96.3%, and Vietnam's 95%. The country's literacy rate also went up post-Marcos. The same set of data from the World Bank shows the adult literacy rate in the Philippines went up to 93.6% by 1990. As of 2015, the country's literacy rate is 98.2% the highest since 1980.